Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. I thought we'd start uh, with Louis Molden today. It's been a while since we've been on the page of Louis Molden. Of course, sponsored by Owen Fitzsimmons. Um, thank you for that, of course. Keeping this man at the club and keeping him in a nice warm house. Uh, of course, a warm house with armed guards outside, of course, uh, because still no one has revealed his identity yet, uh, which is just as bloody well. However, he might well have to change disguises very soon because, you know, as we start to become more famous, it, people are going to start to recognise him. He's going to have to find some way around that. Maybe just playing with a bag over his head or something. How many of this squad do you think can survive in a higher division? Also, how many of your squad are from the original players? Genuinely, I think the only player that's at the club now still... Uh, oh, no, no, technically, I think there's two players that were at the club at the beginning of the... Actually, no. <laughs> bollocks to it. There's a few. I'll show you them. So firstly, Conor DeMeo, he's been at the club this entire save. He's on loan at Bohemian uh, now, but he has been at the club technically the entire save. Uh, gone out on loan a lot, though. Callum Mantak is another one that's been at the club since the start of the save. He's only played a couple of times for us during the early stages. He's been out on loan, of course, to Telford and filed uh, in recent seasons. Although he has... Uh, I did bring... I thought, I swear, I brought him off the bench in the last match. Oh, it was in the uh, Carabao Cup. I brought him off the bench in that game. And I believe the only other player that's been at the club since the beginning of this save was Bruno Bridges, because he was, of course, in our youth... Not in the intake, but like in the youth academy when we very first started the save. So he is the only other remaining member of... Uh, so it's him, Mantak, and Connor DeMeo. But Bruno Bridges, I think, is, I think, the only one that's hopefully going to get a chance to play in all six divisions for the club. And um, I would love to let him have a Premier League penalty or something one day, just so that he gets that. And I want to keep him at the club long enough for him to have a testimonial, because I feel like he's been such an important part of this team. He is the club captain. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to consistently be that role. Uh, God, I can't believe he actually had Portugal under-21 caps. That's impressive. Five of those. He's never going to get anywhere near uh, the national team, of course. But still, he's going to be one hell of a career to follow even after he leaves the club at one stage. You know, it's going to be fun. He's going to be great to look at in the looking forward part. Please make Barnet an affiliate club. I'd love to. If the chance came up, that would be the ultimate messing around with Barnet uh, after them being such a thorn in my side throughout this save would be to make them our baby. Uh, essentially. We'll be their daddy now. Right, so we've had a couple of games off camera in the Carabao Cup and in a game away at Deepdale against currently challenging for the uh, automatic promotion spots, Preston North End. Let's see how we got on. Honestly, I was stupidly disappointed by how we played against Shrewsbury. Um, I, I did a full rotation. As you could see, the squad was basically a completely different team. Murphy in there, Poole, John, Enabakari, Lafferty, Gribben came in to play box to box just back from fitness levels. Hanlon played, Ennis, Ida did play, and he actually scored. We were still actually quite good. Look at the amount of chances we created and attacking wise. We were, we were fantastic. But they took the lead through Regan Hendry early on and Lee Angle made it 2 0. And I didn't know what to do. I, there'd been two highlights and they'd scored two goals. It was a bit of a problem. We then got right back into the game before half time. Goals from Samuel Shashua and Adam Ida. Uh, he scored his first goal in the last live com, I believe. And yeah, it was. It was against Fulham. And now he got his second goal for the club. So two in two for him. Nice to see. Uh, but then in the second half, we, we just we had chances, but we just could not for the life of us put them in the net. I think we were probably still the better side in terms of chances created. Look at the key pass man. Um, but then they caught us out late on. David Turnbull gave them a 3-2 lead and then they caught us on the break at the end uh, with Mwandwe, who I swear scored a couple of goals against us for Shrewsbury in the past. Um, bit of a pain. We were the better side and probably deserved to win, but we, we went out 4-2. Board aren't pleased with me on that one and I'm not that pleased either because I felt like we should do better. And in the next game, we did exactly that. We did do better. It's not a win, but it is a very, very good point. Preston sitting third in the league. They won their first four league matches. We're really into some good form. We took the lead through John Okoro. I have to show you this goal. You're not going to see it in 3D or anything. There's no need for that. But watch the ball. Watch what John Okoro does when this ball is cleared to him and he actually gets this. This is one of the best runs I've seen for a while. He just picks the ball up, goes whilst one, two, three, four, bang. Beautiful goal from John Okoro to give us the lead in this match. This is the kind of thing that he has become. This is the player he's become this year. That's his fourth goal of the season already. He is an absolute beast of a man. Brilliant stuff. Um, but then, right at the stroke of half-time, practically, Daniel Johnson equalised for Preston with a free kick. And they, they were quite good. Then not long after half-time, Callum Robinson uh, from a corner made it 2-1 to Preston. And I could just kind of see the, the, the form draining out of us at this point. But we made a couple of changes. Not ones I would have liked to have really made. Uh, Miller wasn't playing that well, so Niall Ennis came in. And you, um, Ethan O'Kane came on for Bassett, who was having a dreadful day. I think he got a state leading to a goal or something for one of the corners. I, I don't know. But in the 93rd minute, O'Kane picked the ball up in the defence and he just lumped one over the top. And who was on the end of it but Adam Ida to give us a 93rd minute leveller. What a moment for him. Three and three now for Adam Ida. Just looking for slightly longer passes in games does seem to get Ida way more involved in the match because uh, he got a goal and an assist in this one. T to give you an idea of how good he was. Uh, didn't win man of the match though. That went to Johnson. But still a very good performance and a good point away from home. Still only one win, but... 
it's only one defeat as well, I think. We are literally the epitome of mid-table mediocrity right now. Eight points, we're three points clear of the drop zone. But the key thing is, I don't really think we're in much danger of going down this year, in all honesty. Look at that, only a minus one goal difference. When you look at the teams below us, they're getting regularly humped, whereas we seem to be able to compete with most of the teams. Like when you look at where our points have come from, we got a point against Leicester. We, we lost a home to Leeds. We beat Derby away from home. We got a point away at Preston and we got a point at home to Fulham. Um, you know, these are all relatively good results. I'm going to try to show you this screen a little bit more these days. Top average rating in the team is still John Okora with a 5.32. Miller in behind. Uh, Regan Booty up there. Ida now up there. This is what I want to see. Ida actually getting in there. So let's jump into it. Reading away. Reading are currently seeing eight. They're four points clear of us. They are the favourites, um, but they have lost their last game, but they did win the three before that. We've actually not won. Uh, we've only won one natural season. We do need to sort that out. So I'll do a quick switcheroo. Because of the games being so close together, we have got some slight problems here. I feel like as much as I don't want to start him, I kind of have to start Shashua still. I think I'd rather have them switch over. I think Booty's better in this position because he can play as a defensive midfielder too. So I'd prefer him there. Nerfil, O'Kane and Gray. I'll say Tutu and Molden. Okay, that's fine. On the bench, Murphy, Basic, uh, Hume... Uh, yes, I know it's Hume. For some reason, I don't know. In my brain, I was just pronouncing what I saw, but of course it's Hume. Uh, Ennis Poole, Hanlon, and Chris Thorpe. Is that really what the bench I want? Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? Now, Reading play a 4-3-3. They do have a deep line playmaker in Brown. I'm going to switch to a narrow defensive line and try to go after all of these guys. Uh, I think that's what someone told me, because, yeah, I'm, I'm not confident. God, Chris Gunter's still playing there. I might even try Hume out off the bench as a ball winning midfielder, perhaps, if we get ourselves in the lead, but I think that's going to be unlikely, particularly with this system. I just want to see... I mean, I don't know. The fact that we're not losing games, uh, that is very, very nice. And if we could just be a little bit better, have an extra goal in the game, or concede one less, then we will be onto a few more points. And, you know, a surprise win away at Derby. Ironically, we kept a clean sheet in that game, but it was 1-0. So we, we can do it. We are capable of it. That was the other thing I was going to switch. I wanted to make the defensive line very narrow. Um... Because apparently that's just what you have to do against these sort of sides. Into the channel again. Oh, they're already through. Oh, my God. Reading have scored inside three minutes. Andrea Novakovic. Uh, no, sorry. Novakovic gives Reading the lead here at the Medeski. And it's all Magoma's fault, really. Um, he doesn't need to hang on to the ball for as long as that. This is a really nice ball through, though. Uh, Nerfil gets caught out of the pitch. It's a wonderful finish. Again, in the lower leagues, those are probably being saved by Molden. Or they have to square it to score. We trail 1-0 again. Oh, dear. I might immediately just go to a slightly more direct approach and go into the counter press now and maybe even go get stuck in now because i think we just need to push from this moment on god we want to be spreading it to people like here we go that's more like it get john okoro into the game let him have a run at them there's gonna be overlaps uh, i might even switch our wing backs on a bit more ball in magoma puts it wide of the post what a ball in that would have been uh, however i've already noticed something here there's no point in distributing to the centre-backs because they're playing very, very narrow. Shashua, that's more like it. 2-2, two -two, bringing it forward. Can he find a cross? No, goes back for Booty. Can he find a his... Oh, <laughs> yes! Regan Booty with the Booty smacking special. That is just like his speciality now. Has he even got that good long shots? I, I don't know how he keeps pulling these ones out. At the Medeski, it's one all. 2-2 two -two drops it off and Booty just goes, you know what, have a bang on that. That is an absolutely sensational strike. Ah, oh, and the net is broken. It's in off the bar. It's one all at the Medeski. Come on! I am tempted, actually, to turn him into a wingback and him into a wingback as well because there's so much space and actually push our attacking width slightly wider. So when we get that ball, we are really looking to stretch them in the wide areas. Okay, one all at half time. Pretty even game. Um, we've come back into it, though, and Booty's been phenomenal. Booty, Okoro, Booty's ball... Gray, yes, Liam Miller sneaking into the box. Reading one, Stockport two, Liam Miller with his seventh goal of the season already. And this would be a huge win to go and actually beat one of the teams towards the top again. Lovely work from John Gray had to knock that down. Liam Miller just in front of the goal. Right, I'm switching our defenders back again. And I'm also tempted to try John Hume. As a ball, as a box, uh, as a ball winning midfielder in the middle. Just use the wing. Oh my God, use the wing back. Arebo. Oh, God, that's a really good ball. Get your blocks in, guys. No! No! Bob Varson! Oh, dear. We've been so good in this second half, and we just can't quite get it over the line there. Um, if he'd just been a bit more sensible with the ball out, this is a really good ball into the channel. 2-2 Two -two gets caught out. Gray, I think that is the man coming across. He gets across near post, and it's a simple finish for Reading, and it's 2 all. And there we go. Reading 2, Stockport 2, Booty's goal, Miller's goal. I thought we'd done it, but... Ah, uh, Dathi Bothvarsen gets the equaliser.
We've had a lot of late equalizers in this. The, the Leicester one, we got one against Preston. Now we've conceded one to Reading. I thought we'd done it. I thought we'd got away with it, but it wasn't to be. We're still in search of our second win, but it's another not defeat. We've only lost once this season too uh, in the league. So there is that. And we're still keeping pace with a decent number of points. We just need to turn a few more of these into wins. And I'm hoping we can do that. So we're looking a little bit better. Right then, we're back. Going to jump straight into things with the Luton Town game. It's a home game. Admittedly, they are now above us in the league, uh, but they're a slightly further down the table team and we are at home and I just want to see us go and grab a win. Uh, get the home fans something to cheer about, you know? Unfortunately, lots of players knackered. Um, yeah, I actually can see that one working, to be honest. Magoma pushes forward, Booty and then Davidson playing all three of them with Ida, Okoro, Miller, and Abakare, Basic, Gray, uh, Tutu and Molden in the team. I think we'll be okay with that for on the bench. Uh, O'Kane, Ogumbi, Ennis, Bridges, Poole and Brandon Hanlon. That's fine. They're playing a 4 4 2 potentially with Diego Poyet uh, in the middle there. We've got Belford deal, Gary Medine, of course. Uh, ooh, okay, 4 4 2. It's, it's been a while since we played a 4 4 2 against us. But regardless, I'm having a bloody great time. The matches are at least very exciting this season. That's what I would say. And I hope that you're feeling that as well, regardless even if we're not winning all of the time, because we're going to get, hopefully, just as many of those late equalizers ourselves as we're giving away. Right, let's go. Um. Let's just demand more from the very kickoff in this match. A home game against Luton is the kind of game that I would have earmarked for us to be getting of three points in. If we can get three points here, I think it would just pull us that little bit further away from the drop zone to the point where we're becoming a, a comfortable mid-table team. They've got some dangerous looking strikers, do Luton Town. McLaughlin over on the side here. It goes past one, past two, all the way through a Molden with the big save. We've got a lot of the ball, but very little creativity in the team. And I do worry that that's because we've got Magoma in that spot rather than someone like Shashua or Gribbin. Here we go. Breakaway, potentially. Ida. Men surging beyond here. One of them is Booty. A chorus at the back post. Booty might fancy this himself. Ida's through! Yes! Adam Ida. Stockport 1, Luton Town 0. Adam Ida's fourth goal of the year. I was a bit concerned about him in the early days of the, the first sort of five or six matches. I wasn't sure if he really was going to get a lot of goals. But he starts this move off by sliding it into Booty. He then absolutely belts it through. Booty with a lovely ball back through. And Ida... Gets on the end of it. Stockport 1, Luton Town 0. Perfect. Just what we needed right now. I'm content with that because... Oh, yes! Oh, he's offside. Ida nearly could have had his second of the night. That's nice to see, though. Nice to see him getting in those positions. Uh, it must have been pretty close. Oh! Is that even offside? It looked like the defender's leg was playing him on. Only his hand looked to be in an offside position there. Um, that was a bit tight for me. Okay, not the best first half, but we are leading through Adam Ida, and I want us to get this one over the line. We're going to move to a slightly more, um, not long ball, but just back to standing, because I feel like we could pick off a few passes to Ida in the second half and might be able to get in behind them a bit more. I just want us to have a slightly bigger range of passes available. Um, you know, just pass to where the players are, pass to where the space is. Now that we've got something to hang on to, it's not quite so important that we play tight little intricate football. We just need to get, keep the ball. Booty, go on, you know. <laughs> Regan goddamn Booty. He only scores bangers. That is insane. That's actually better than the one he got in the last match. It's 2-0 now to Stockport County. Lovely. Look at that for a ball from 2-2. But what about this from Booty? Oh, get out of my face, he says, as he smashes it in the top corner. Stockport 2, Luton Town 0 right then. Miller, can he knock it back inside for someone? He can. It's Booty again. It's Booty again, and he's hit the post. He could have had his second of the night. 2-0, and we look very likely to be getting a third rather than conceding, and that's fine by me. Magoma. They've gone more direct as well, so we do need to be careful still. But for the moment, it's looking good for us. 2-2. What a ball. That's what I'm on about. Adam Ida, can he finish it again? Oh, he can't. That was the chance. That should have been 3-0 and Ida should... Those are the sort of chances that Ida has been bought to score. And he couldn't do it on that occasion. But at least he's making the runs. And it looks as though we're going to get away with it. It looks as though not only are we going to win the match, which is great, just what we needed to do, but we're going to win the match and keep a clean... Oh, please no. Yes, it looks like we're going to get a clean sheet at home as well. There we go. Our first home win in the championship. A 2-0 victory. Goals from Adam Ida and Regan Booty with the booty smacker. Um, two in two games for him with absolute wonder goals. Fantastic. Man of the match for Regan Booty. He's finding his feet here as well. He's finding his booty. 100th game for us as well for Louis Molden, which is really nice. What a win. Now, of course, we were expecting to try and go and win this match, but it's nice that we've actually been able to pull it off. You know, we've, we've struggled in some of these games. It's nice to get that victory. And we was a seven points clear of the drop zone. We've got a, pl a, a, a positive goal difference. Actually, only four points off the playoffs now. Uh, still only lost one match this season, which was the game against Leeds. I, I do think there's a lot more in this season for us still. Um, but it probably will be a lot of positions around this point. But I don't know. Like, it's a run of wins and you could find yourself top half easily. So I feel like a big chunky boy uh, episode next time. So we'll do quite a few off camera. We'll do Brentford, Sheffield Wednesday, Bournemouth. Wow, Bournemouth is struggling. QPR. 
Birmingham, wow. Uh, and we'll come back and do Swansea at home. That'll be quite a fun one because Swansea have got a player that I was quite interested in. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how well he plays against us. But if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, we're getting nearly 10k in for our home games now, which is really nice. We sold out uh, for the 4 all against Fulham. A 2-0 home victory. We've scored at least two goals in every single game for like ages. Uh, we've just not been able to be so good defensively, but we were good defensively against Luton. And it's about bloody time. That's the kind of results we need to see more of. Anyway, if you've enjoyed it, drop a like. That'd be superb. And if you're new to the channel, hit that big old subscribe button, the big red one. And maybe even turn the bell on if you want notifications. That's a thing people say in 2018 slash 19, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.